Hello everybody and welcome to part 11, quite possibly the final part of this introductory series to making your first game in Game Maker. What we're going to be doing in this part is just kind of adding a finishing touch to the game by making it so that when the player respawns, um, they have a brief period of kind of invincibility that they can't be destroyed by another asteroid. It's a really simple thing to do, but it's just going to give us kind of that extra little bit of polish and make it so that if an asteroid happens to be passing over the center when we get killed, we don't just kind of die and then die immediately two more times and the player loses all their lives and gets really frustrated by it. So basically what we're going to do to accomplish this is we're going to set up a new sprite for the player where the player is just kind of flashing and is kind of indicating to the player that they are in an invincible state and we're going to set up the player object to be that sprite by default so that when the player object spawns, um, it's flashing and it will have that kind of invincibility look to it. After a few seconds, we'll make that sprite go away and replace it with the regular sprite, and then all we have to do is make it so that when the player collides with an asteroid, the asteroid will only kill you if you are using the normal player sprite and not the invincibility sprite. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually right click on SPR underscore player, our player sprite, and go down to duplicate down here. So we just make a complete copy of our player sprite. It's called sprite 7 at the moment, but that's not what we need. I'm going to call it SPR underscore player underscore I. Okay, just for in I for invincibility. So we have SPR underscore player and SPR underscore player underscore I now. If we go to edit sprite, we see we just have the, the same sprite from before, a little triangle, and go up to animation. Uh, it's quite a cool little feature of uh, game makers like sprite editors. It allows you to do some sort of very basic kind of um, animated effects without having to go out into a different program and really do this sort of stuff. Or to do it manually. Just a few little simple things. I mean, they're not particularly... Um, like super fancy effects, but they're pretty useful for various things. The one we're going to use here is called Fade to Color. I'm going to click that and I'm just going to select white. Click OK and it'll tell, ask you for a number of frames you want to do this over and I'm just going to write three. And you see it creates three frames here and you can see animating over here of um, our player sprite fading from black to white. And then I'm going to go to animation and hit add reverse which will copy this entire animation and add it on the end in reverse order. So now you can see it fades all the way to white and then fades all the way back to black. Okay, over just about six frames. Okay. Really, really simple animation, just to kind of give that indication that you're in a, a special state to the player, which, you know, will be invincibility. So go ahead and save that, close that down. Now I'm going to come into our player object, obj underscore player. Um, at the moment, we our sprite is set to spr underscore player, but I'm going to change that so that by default, the sprite is spr underscore player underscore i, because that's what we want the sprite to be when the player spawns in the first place. We want them to be invincible for a few seconds. I'm going to right click um, in events and I'm going to add the create event. Okay, I'm going to drag in execute code as usual. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all set image speed to equal about 1 over, one over 3 or a third, right? I could also type like 0 0.333 or whatever as well, but I'm just going to uh, go with 1 over 3 for about a third of the usual speed which is currently 60 FPS and reduce it down to 20 FPS just so it plays that animation at a slower speed because played at 60 FPS this animation is like like if I type it there to test it is like ludicrously quick okay so we want it at 20 which is going to look a bit more like that and looks just a little bit more reasonable but you can change that to whatever you want it to be so after typing that I'm going to type alarm uh, square bracket zero close square bracket alarms are a tool you can use in game maker to decide to do something after a certain amount of time has passed how this works is every an alarm is effectively an event okay just like how you have the create event and the step event and all that stuff you have a series of events called alarm events um, you have about I think like 12 of them and they're all numbered like alarm zero alarm one alarm two and so on and so forth just so that it allows you to set up multiple different alarms that do different things, but they all work in the same way. So I'm starting off with zero, which is our, our first alarm. And what I'm going to do is set alarm zero to equal 240. Um, what that means is 240 frames from now at 60 FPS, so about four seconds, four seconds from when this line of code is run, um, this object will trigger the event alarm zero. 
So if I go ahead and click OK to save the changes to that, and in events here, right click, hit add event, go to alarm and select alarm zero. Any actions I put into here now will be carried out when alarm zero is triggered. And as we know, because we put it in the create event, the alarm zero would happen 240 frames after this line of code. The player object will be made, then 240 frames later, this event will go off. You see how it works? That's how we make things happen over a length of time. So all we want to do when this alarm goes off, I'm going to drag in execute code, and I'm going to write sprite underscore index equals sbr underscore player, and set ourselves back to our regular player sprite, the one that doesn't animate or flash, just as we did before. Now I can go ahead and run that so you can see that working. You see now, you see how I'm like kind of flashing like that? Oh. Hang on, I forgot to reset the origin. Very important point. Um, when you do duplicate this sprite, make sure, because it can reset your origin point sometimes, to hit center on the sprite's origin. I could tell that right away because it wasn't rotating around the correct uh, point. It was rotating around the corner instead of around the center. There we go. So you can see I'm flashing white for a few seconds, and then I'm back to my regular, regular, uh, regular sprite. Now, if I go ahead and crash into something during that flash, the, me the reason I made it kind of last a long time is so it would be easier for us to test. You might want it to actually be a shorter length of time than 240. But I just set it up uh, to be a long length of time so it would be easier for us to test. If I crash into things at the moment during that flash, nothing is actually any different, right? It's, it's still running the code the same way, and I will still die even if I'm flashing and I'm in this invincibility state, just as I would if I wasn't, okay? So all we need to do now is go ahead and change that. Very, very easy to change because if you remember, there's only one place we actually destroy the player object, and that's in obj underscore asteroid under the collide with object player event, okay? Um, now, important to note, the code that we ran here, uh, even though this is in obj underscore asteroid, uh, the collision event for our obj underscore player, when we run this piece of code, we ticked applies to other up here. So all of this code is running inside the player object that we're colliding with and not obj underscore asteroid, which means it's very easy for us to get what we want by just going to the very top of this code and typing if sprite index equals spr underscore player. It's going to check the sprite index of the object that's running this code, which is obj underscore player, and see if it equals our normal player sprite. As when the player is created, it won't equal that. Instead, it will equal spr underscore player underscore i. So just by putting that if statement there and then wrapping all of the rest of this code inside of a pair of curly braces, so put one there to open, and put one there at the end to close, and then just to make it consistent with the rest of our code, um, sort of our code formatting, I'm going to select all of the code in those curly braces and just press tab just to indent it by one. An interesting little tidbit some people might not know is if you select a block of indented code like that and you press shift and tab, it actually tabs it back. So you can tab things forward and tab them back very easily by doing that. Okay, and now go ahead and close that. That's every that is everything we actually need to make this work. So if I go ahead and run the game now, I should be able to fly around with this flashy effect on and not crash into any asteroids. But when it's run out, I crash as normal. Let's just test it again. Oh, it ran out while I was over the top of it then. Let's see if so I can just do that. And then I die. Okay, so it works as expected. And starts when we restart the game, and it happens when we die. So that's literally everything you need for that. Uh, one change I actually went ahead and made before this video, which you might want to make, is sometimes when you're invincible, if you've not changed anything in the player's depth, uh, the player can sometimes appear below asteroids um, when you're invincible and makes the player harder to see. If you want to change that just for um, a little bit of extra quality, go into OBJ and score player and just set depth to be minus one or something negative that is lower than uh, OBJ underscore asteroid, which just makes it draw in front of uh, those asteroids at all times, okay? But you may want that depth to be higher 
than obj underscore game over, which draws the game over screen on fr in front of it. Okay, so you want that. That's how depth works. Okay, you put when you want things to draw further in front, you set the depth to be lower, and when you want things to draw further back, you set the depth to be higher so that it's considered to be deeper into the screen. That's the best way of kind of visualizing it, in my opinion. So there you have it. That's how you take your player object and give them a, a brief respawn invincibility period. This will probably be the last part in the series for now. There are other topics I want to cover with this game, but I think it would probably be not like directly a part 12 if that makes sense, but I would probably do something like your first game expanded, where we take this game that we've made so far and we add a bit more to it and we make it a bit more complicated. Um, I will upload the code for this game now that it's kind of reached kind of a more finished kind of state and uh, I'll put it in the description of this video so you can download it and play around with it if you want to use this as a, a foundation or you want to compare everything you've written to make sure you've gotten everything right and so on and so forth. Um, I may go on to do a your second game series or your first RPG series or something like that at some point um, but for now this will be the end of this exact thing that I'm doing here. As I said I may come back to this code, we may do some more things with it, add some difficulty tuning, maybe add some like enemies that shoot at you and different stuff like that, but I think I've covered most of the basic stuff that I wanted to cover in this particular series at this point. So I'm going to leave this and I'm going to move on to doing some other exciting things uh, in the future, which I hope now you'll have a bit more experience um, with using the software and you'll be able to follow along with some of the more advanced stuff we do later on. Thank you guys ever so much for watching this series, I hope you got a lot out of it. If you found it useful and you think other people would find it useful, please remember to like this video, remember to share the playlist, share the videos with other people, and uh, that will help me be able to do more content like this. If you would like to support in a more direct way, please definitely consider supporting me on Patreon.com, that's basically what keeps me alive and able to make content like this for you guys, and I will hopefully catch you guys on the next video, whatever it may be. So thank you guys ever so much again for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. See ya, dudes.